Handewitt is a pioneer. Uh, some of you might know him, some of you not. He has been uh, one of the um, initiators of Shambhala uh, in the Netherlands um, in the late 70s. And um, he is a pioneer in some sense because he is also a professor in university and he introduced the notion of contemplative psychology. So he uh, sort of made the bridge between Western psychology and Buddhism. And he's the author of several books, the last of which is called Buddhism for Thinkers. And he's been highly appreciated uh, for his merit of contributing to the quality of um, society uh, acknowledged by the Queen of the Netherlands. So I would like to ask Han to um, address us, please. Well, thank you. <coughs> Let's see. Um, what I would like to uh, speak about is this idea of transforming society that uh, Sakyong Mipam yesterday addressed and uh, go a little, little further with that. And I think what binds us together is the fact that we're all in some way, whether in the area of uh, healthcare, uh, economics, or um, art, we're all, what binds us is that we are s somehow looking for how, how to uh, enhance life, how to make society uh, a better place. Now, usually when we talk about society, we tend to uh, think in f terms of uh, institutions, changing institutions and maybe creating better institutions so that we can uh, improve the way society works. And particularly in the Netherlands, as you know, the idea of justice has always been a very central theme, Erasmus, people like that, and uh, with the idea that if you have a good uh, juridical system, uh, society would flourish. And at the same time, we have politicians, and they have the same idea, if we make better institutions, then somehow we can make the, uh, our society flourish. The interesting thing uh, of what seems to come up in the last 10 years or so is that people started to address something that is deeper than, than this. And that is um, that we start to look more for the underlying uh, human uh, way of being the underlying level of our deepest, deepest wish, which binds us, in fact, which uh, we all share, which is um, not connected with any particular political system. It's not necessarily connected with certain institutions, but it's the, the deep wish that we all have uh, to make life flourish, to make, uh, to, to make ourselves happy, to make other people happy, to see that the world somehow uh, unfolds in the most humane way. We, we like that, don't we? We really, we, we have the, all this deep wish. Maybe this deep wish is, is limited to ourselves and our direct family, Maybe it's broader than that, but fundamentally we have th that deep wish. The deep wish to work together and to create what in Shambhala language would be called uh, enlightened society. This, what this means is that in a way we are looking for the principles of the heart. The, that, this, let's say, the, 
the, the, the principles that uh, bring about or enhance our humanity, our, our humanness. These principles are universal. This long or this longing, you could say, this deep longing to see our lives flourish, to see other people's lives flourish, and to see the world flourish, that's a, a very deep longing that we all share. And if as long as we our actions are coming from that deep longing, we somehow stay in touch with our own humanity. This deep longing is also, also needs to be connected with some kind of understanding or insight in the world around us. Because that insight helps us to see how, how we can express that deep longing, give it, give it a shape in words and deeds, in the way we organize our lives, on whatever level it might be. Whether we look at society on a, on a very small scale, like family situation, there is this, this mutual longing uh, to be a happy family. When we look at our work, we all know that uh, what, what we are working on is important. We might like our work, but to work with our colleagues, ultimately, that keeps us enjoying our work for a long, long time. If, our, if we can work together harmoniously with our colleagues. So, what we're looking for all the time is how to create that kind of uh, society, whether it's our family, our work, uh, or on a large, larger scale, our maatschappij, uh, our society at large, Dutch society, world society. All these areas, we, we this underlying principle of this deep longing is there. Now, unfortunately, we have this history of the last century of many, many wars. And they have done something to our minds. They have done something to our society. What they did is they made it more difficult for us to believe in this deep wish, to trust that deep wish. And as you probably know, or actually it's said in the Bible, that this kind of disruption or sin, if you want to use that word, I'm not, a, not in favor of that, but any, anyhow, that, that carries on for seven generations. And we know that even though I would say almost none of us here has experienced the last uh, world war, second world war, personally, maybe few of you just as a child somewhat, but still it's with us. And when we see what's happening now in the world, with ISIS and, all, and uh, other terrible things, it reinforces our feeling that this deep wish cannot be trusted. Maybe, maybe personally we do feel it, but we think our neighbor probably doesn't have it. It's just planning on terrible things. And by the way, this is what the neighbor thinks about us. So, what we see, there is some kind of deep underlying distrust in human nature. And the, the, the big problem in terms of looking for social transformation is that if there, if there is this distrust, 
then that doesn't bring people together, but it makes that we want to, uh, to insulate ourselves just in case and open the door a little bit for a few friends that we feel we are safe with. There's that kind of underlying feeling, also on a political level. I'm not only talking about a personal level, or actually I am talking about a personal level, but it ex extends to all organizations. This is, of course, a little bit black and white, what I'm saying here, but I mean, even when it's there, there is this pain. The pain of being, un being unable to be in touch with our basic humanity, our fundamental goodness, as we call it in Shambhala, our, our, this, this deep longing. So, that's why it's said that distrust destroys society and trusting our human nature, our, this deep wish, binds society and brings society together. And it's true. There's a lot of evil in the world. It's there. But where does it come from? If, let's just look at ourselves for a moment. When we do something mean, that happens, right? Sometimes, not too often, but you, you, know, you know, we do that. Then at the, look at the moment you do that. At that moment, you do that, or we do that, I have to include myself definitely here, we do that because we don't see a way out in the direction of this deep wish. It's the only thing, we feel this wish of ma making a situation good, and the only thing that seems to uh, uh, go in that direction is to beat the other down, or to insult somebody, or whatever. At the moment, we see that as the only, the best of the, of the worst solutions, <laughs> the best of the worst. And then afterwards we say, oh, that was stupid, oh, how could I do it? Sure, that was a stupid thing, I uh, hurt somebody. But at the moment itself, it's as if our, just because that deep wish is there, this is the only way to, uh, to, to express it. Now, maybe some of you might wonder, say, well, this is all very nice. And this deep wish, uh, okay, I've heard that now, I've said many, many, many times, and uh, oh, all right, but do I have it? Well, I can prove that to you. I can prove that you have it. Because all the disappointment, all the pain that you feel when you're confronted with suffering, either your own or that of others, the fact that you're not uh, uh, onverschillig, uh, indifferent, you're not indifferent to it, is because it touches on this deep wish. If you wouldn't have that longing, that deep longing, as, a, as the most powerful force of building society, you wouldn't care. You would, you would simply you wouldn't care when you see suffering, but it touches us. So that that shows something, right? It shows that all our. It's not only you, by the way, who has that. Your neighbor has it too. <laughs> not only your neighbor, but also people living far away from here. They all have this, and of course because of the frustration, they might put that into action in a way that we think, this is really stupid. Just like we make mistakes and do, do mean things. But this way of looking at evil, or bad things that happen in the world, changes our perspective, right? And it's from this change of perspective 
that all our further uh, ways of improving society can come. So, this I just wanted to say as an introduction. I hope it was not too long. Thank you very, very much, Han, for this uh, wonderful... Uh